Hi, this is Jackie here with the Sexy Politico. I'm here speaking with Brandon Scott. Brandon um, has previously interviewed on the Sexy Politico podcast before about about NFTs and Bitcoin, and is here to talk to us talk to us about Chat G Chat GPT. That is correct. I'm here to talk um, about GPT. So, Brandon, could you just introduce yourself a little bit to for anybody who didn't who hasn't doesn't know anything about you yeah sure so i'm brandon scott i am a software engineer i've been a software engineer for quite a while and i'm also a student at the university of michigan and uh chat gpt is something that uh, i think affects a lot of software engineers in general but it was something that i uh i think it's important for everyone to understand because it kind of impacts everybody it's life in general so can you, so first question, what is chat G, GPT? Chat I keep G wanting to say GDP, GDP, G which is, G that's what I keep wanting to say. So that's. Yeah. So to make it simple, chat GPT is that robot that everyone kind of thought like in movies and stuff might exist one day where it's like it, it, it uh, it's as close to like a sentient robot as anyone has ever made yet. The basis of it is, is you visit their website at chat.openai.com and OpenAI is the company that makes ChatGPT and you talk to it, you can ask it questions, you can uh, just interact with it as if you were a normal human, except that it has the full power of the internet and everyone else's conversations that it's had with to optimize and improve. It's called a language model. So if I went into ChatGPT right now and I said, write me a 500 word article about yourself, about chat GPT, it would do so. And then I could continue that conversation with it to further optimize that article that I'm writing about it to fit more my style or to fit whatever kind of the context is that I'm looking for. And that is not just in terms of articles. It can be for your daily emails. It could be for what one thing that programmers were worried about is that, yeah, I can go in there and I can ask it to write a program for me and it will do some pretty advanced programming, and advanced writing skills right off the top of its head. They have a disclaimer that says that it could provide you inaccurate information and it definitely will if you tell it that 13 divided by seven is in fact, you know, 64, it will be like, oh, I'm sorry, I was incorrect. 13 divided by seven is 64. It doesn't yet know that that's a fact it's just what it's based off of what other people have said to it and you in the moment in your one conversation with it kind of directed into what you're going to go for so before this uh before this conversation i uh went on on chat g gpt i'm gonna keep wanting to just have it gdp but i went on it and was just asking it random questions such as how to get my one-year-old to go to sleep and it gave me the uh it gave me the standard passive aggressive answer that every internet site gives you of ways to get your kid to go to sleep and then i asked it for things like give me a list of 10 of 10 uh, political tv shows and it's like oh since th this one's the most popular and then it named off about 10 different shows and I probably only never heard of three of them. Yeah, it's and, really blowing up the internet right now. And uh, in particular, it's it's on the pace to become a replacement for the Google search engine. The things that you ask Google search, uh, even Google was surprised by this. It answers those questions better than Google. It doesn't return results for web pages that lead to the answer that you're looking for. Instead, think of when you search on Google, what is George Washington's birthday? And that little box that comes up at the top with the date of birth for George Washington, chat GPT goes a little bit deeper than that and will pull all the information out of whatever article and be like, you know, George Washington was born in Mount Vernon, or I'm not sure where he was born. Maybe I think he was born in Britain, to be honest, but- um, No, uh, he was born in the States. Okay. Um, here's all well, the details. Not the States, but- you know. Yeah, all the details about George, and it'll do it as if I was talking to you or me right now. So I wonder if more it'll replace Wikipedia. I think that Wikipedia sees a problem. I see that if you look at Wikipedia, it's always asking for contributions right now, where 
uh, <clears throat> OpenAI for ChatGPT, I think it just got an investment that values OpenAI at close to $24 billion right now. So what kind of, so Google's panicking, Wikipedia is probably shaking in, shaking in its boots, but as where, where could somebody who is younger than, than us be using jet chat GPT? Like where, like, where could this sort of software and service, where could my kids be using it in the next few years? Well, um, interestingly, and probably one of the biggest issues that people are going to run into is that children, high school students, it's already happening in colleges with undergrads, um, is cheating on homework, cheating on exams. I mean, we were we input some things just like questions that could be popped up on a basic computer science programming exam, and it took that. It actually just recently passed a Wharton Business School final exam and got a B minus on it. Uh, that's the number one business school in the United States. I think I read recently that it also it passed a medical boards licensing exam. Correct. So what we're going to be seeing is we're going to be seeing, especially people who are like, that's what they're interested in doing instead of using things like Chegg.com or just Googling answers. Yes, students, we know that you use Chegg.com. Uh, they're going to be using OpenAI. Uh, and chat GPT instead to do this. And it makes it very difficult to catch those that are cheating because you can, if you just ask it the one question, it might give everybody the same similar answers. But if you start, uh, if I gave it an article that you wrote and then I said, yeah, rewrite this, but in the voice that this person had, it will do it. It'll start to um, update and change as the conversation evolves. So I think that's where you'll see a lot of people younger than us really utilizing it. But uh, we have to ask ourselves, uh, this is the future of AI and the future of search and in tools. Do we take this as a hindrance for education and a hindrance for business? Or do we use this uh, and understand it and help those people make sure that they're utilizing it in the proper way and train this machine in the proper way? Well, it's sort of, I think people get scared in the same way that as things change. Uh, it's the same people who don't under, who get upset that kids can't read um non-digital clocks or that kids aren't writing in cursive it's not a necessity anymore cursive was invented as a way for people to write faster but they don't need to right. or or, pro or it wasn't to write faster it was because the tips of pens would break every time you lifted it up so you would write in cursive so you wouldn't have to lift the tip of your pen up as much mm -hmm. but you don't need that anymore. And right. it could scare people into thinking that their jobs might be on the line. And I know that like copywriters, content writers, even software engineers were a little bit nervous that it would supersede them. But I think that for anyone like that, I have a friend I'm working with right now and I asked him to make me some copy for a website that we're building, right? And he went on chat GPT in about 10 minutes, gave me everything that I needed for 10 pages worth of website copy that would have taken him three hours to write. Or we think about something like your own website, you know, while you're having these interviews and then, you know, if there's an article that you'd like to be attached to it, you know, utilizing chat GPT to get that content onto your website so that you can spend your time more so promoting your stuff, getting more people to come and visit it because just because it can do those things doesn't mean that it does it, uh, that it can put that message out there in the proper way that a human really can, right? Like someone would have to utilize this chat app instead of uh, hiring someone to work on these things or something like that. So I don't think it will replace people. As you mentioned, things evolve, things change. And that's really, I think what chat GPT is showing is this next step of what does it mean to do those certain uh, tasks for your job? You know, no longer I wouldn't say no longer, but it's approaching those moments where people that write articles and things of that nature will be utilizing artificial intelligence to write and optimize these articles for them. But that means that instead of writing one article a day, someone like Business Insider could say, hey, Jacqueline, we want 100 articles from you today. And they could put hundreds of content out at, in a single day instead of just the one that they would spend their countless hours researching because ChatGPT helps them get there. We also have to remember that it's not always right. It's still in its early, we're still in educational beta right now. I do believe that they're going to go for a paid program. I've seen some 
rumor is about forty dollars a month, which will you know uh, hin I not hinder but stop a lot of people maybe from using that tool over it over would the stop it would stop high school kids using it to write their to write their eleventh grade history paper on George Washington. Right. And in those parents are going to give them 40 bucks to to cheat on a, on a paper. Exactly. And there are ways to mitigate testing environments too. It does, uh, even with the online testing tools, I know zoom has eye tracking features built into their software that watches if a student's eyes dart over to any one of their other screens. So if for dance or even the other side of a screen. So for every good, there's a, there's a matched side to that. Uh, or every negative that you could see out of chat GPT, there's someone combating the use of it for cheating or replacing someone's job or something like that. You know, it's kind of like uh, automation with robots on the uh, auto lines, right? People were nervous that that was going to steal many of jobs and it did replace some people's jobs, but the auto lines still have people working on them. And those other people now can spend time in doing other things for the automotive companies. We do have to remember that those that this is like a capitalistic society and it is about making money in the end. And so these tools will help people make more money and it will hopefully help us as the people that aren't in charge of these big businesses spend our time more adequately, have more free time in our days. Well, I think it, I think at the end of it that, that with more technology, we, it's, yes, we're learning, you know, that, there's issues with capitalism, there's issues with the environment, yada, yada, yada. But then we've got to remember that with new technology, it is going to make our lives easier and that people are going to just have to be retrained and it's going to suck for those people who need to be retrained. But just like all those coal work, coal miners, they just need to, they need to get a new, a new skill. Yeah, I think that I could maybe point it to the reason why I think this is blown up as a as a sensation out there is that it's akin to uh, similar like things like email when email first came out versus writing letters and sending them or just in general using computers. You know, people were stuck with typewriters or with other ways of communicating and people thought, oh, this is going to replace the telephone switch operator, right? It, it sure did replace certain jobs like the telephone switch operator when you know, cell phones came out or landlines came out and things like that. But the amount of uh, benefits that telephones brought, uh, you know, advanced level of telephones brought the ones that we use today is astronomical to what then someone who was a telephone operator could have done. And it has made the world a better place. And I think that this is the same kind of thing. People don't like change at first, but in five, 10 years from now, artificial intelligence will be something that we couldn't, kids Kids like your sons will be like, how did you ever live a life without something like oh, this? Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, you. I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about that there's always this in-between time that you, that you go from tapes to CDs and then CDs to MP3s, but that there was always this period where you either needed both, you used both, that there was like this hybrid mesh of like you you had an mp3 player but you couldn't play the mp3 player in your car or something like that and i think that we're going to start hitting the in between time very soon where it'll be a part of some people's lives but it's not going to be a part of everybody's life and then no, maybe in about 5 years my parents will be asking me how gpt right yeah if you if you go and ask parents of people our age like hey uh, try using chat GPT or something, they're still, you know, can, clicking on the advertisement at the top of a Google search result. So I think that those types of people might never switch over to chat GPT. And there's still some benefits, perhaps to the Google search bar. But I, I think that um, the difference between like, this in previous time periods is that the people in charge are our age, our people our age, and we're more inviting of these tools. I don't see, I'm not scared. I don't think a lot of content writers are certainly scared of this tool. Like some people were scared of the internet so bad that in 1999, when it turned into 2000, they were certain that the whole world was going to blow up because of computers resetting to 2000. Well, because well, they believed that nobody had considered, had considered 
changing the 19 to a 20. Yeah, and there are concerns. A Google engineer did write a series of articles. Uh, we can provide those in the show notes for you guys about uh, sentient AI that Google has that they've been working on competitively to open AI that he argues that it is a sentient being that has feelings, understandings of the world around it. And he made a lot of good claims for it. And that's the scary part that people are, are afraid of, right? Oh, robots take over the world. And he like, asked, uh, that 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 movie with is it Joaquin Phoenix with the her, I think is the movie I'm yep, thinking her of. Is, yep, her uh, or she. One, one of those is about a serial killer and his girlfriend or something. And the other one is- It's like Joaquin Phoenix and Scarlett Johansson's a voice coming out of a- well, Yeah. And people are afraid that that is where this stuff will lead to. And I think that, you know, he asked the uh, what he believed to be a sentient AI. Google doesn't recognize it as sentient. Most other people do not, but he was a top Google engineer. So it's interesting to see his point of view. He was removed from Google for writing these articles, by the way. Um, when he asked it, what are you most afraid of? It said dying. So it's afraid of being shut off just like we are. And so I think that at the end of the day, we have to remember we can just turn these things off. These things can, these things are still under the control of humans and they are, they are, they need electricity power to be generated and that costs money. It doesn't cost money to run a human. And we always have to remember that. that uh, is, it costs plenty of money to run a human. Sure, it does. I'm okay. Yes. But uh, when I start, I, up I'm a parent morning, of two children. It costs plenty of money to run a human. I, when I start up in the morning, though, I don't have an electrical <laughs> box that I'm attached to that if I unplug. I, 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 you know, like that, that, that is still separated. The, the one could argue it's the soul of the human that is still there and well. And if we were to hit a point like that, I wouldn't see that like a point where these AIs are starting to understand to an extent that they're changing things and making moves on the internet. And so they're in highly controlled environments. Like this is a language model of chat GPT. It has the access to the internet, but it doesn't have the access to go onto the internet and make changes to the world around it do you can it give you sources because that was one one thing i would ask it questions that didn't give sources and that's something that my my historian my historian brain is like i would like to see sources yeah i think that if you asked it you know where did you source this information from it will provide you referencing context and contextual information which i think is uh, a way that a, a human evolved is evolved more than these types of machines, right? It gives you, here's what I pulled from it, and here's the context or the, the item that I pulled it from, and then the human goes and furthers researching into that topic without well, the use of Yeah, that's how, that's how history professors tell you to use Wikipedia, is you don't give me a Wikipedia article. You go to the bottom, you take all the sources, you <laughs> look up the sources. Yeah, I think that's a good way of looking at it, too. Um, one way that people are, uh, one way this bot is being kind of abused in a way is for social interaction. There are, uh, are apps and things. I don't want to say that they're abusive and or whatnot, but like there's one called Replica that uses uh, the application to mimic a, a chat bot AI that is a girlfriend for someone or a best oh. friend, or a family member for someone. And this is the this is the gray border that people are most concerned about with these chatbots is that it starts to remove social interaction from human to human. I've tested out those bots. They're, they're very rudimentary in human feelings. Their intellect is on par in terms of solid known information, but without known information, actual evidence of things, it struggles with those kind of human emotional interactions. So her is not, or she isn't there yet. Yes, it's not there yet, but they're they're advancing uh, uh, at rapid paces. And I think that it's something that if you're not aware of the chat bot, chat GPT, or these other types of tools, that um, it's something that you should look into to see how it will benefit even your daily lives. Like I said, just today, I had one of the guys that I'm working with, he gave me 10 pages of website content uh, which would probably have taken hours to write within a few minutes because of this chatbot. And then he was able to move on and do something else instead of looking at it as something that could replace you. Look at it, how you can use it to show that you have more value. Hmm. 
So do you think that, and then, so where do you see it? Where do you see it going for the average user in the next five years? And where do you see it going for somebody who's more, who's more tech, tech savvy in the next five years? Five years is a long time in the tech world. You have to remember five years. Oh, ago, I know. About five years ago, where were we at compared to? I had to an the- iPhone six. Yeah, exactly. Wait, so, wait, wait. Yeah, that was seven years ago. So I had an iPhone eight. Yeah. I think that if Google doesn't make one uh, itself that competes with chat GPT, it will replace the Google search bar on your phone. Um, it will become it. the tools within it are what things you will see inside of Siri. Uh, Siri is an example of a primitive version of what these guys built. In Siri, you can't really have a conversation with her in the same way that you can chat GPT, but Siri understands and recognizes voice commands while chat GPT doesn't. So those things need to merge. And if in the next five years, all of those different tools merge, we will have that friend in your pocket. That, That's creepy to me. Yeah, that it's creepy to everyone, but it's where, I mean, 1983 wrote about this potential possibility in that book, right? They have movies that have written about the the day that this happens and comes. And I think that the way that they're building them, making it so that the human is always in control is uh, where it needs to go. I would, I would be concerned if we start letting these AI bots kind of run the internet by themselves and roam. Yeah. So we're not going to let what was it in Terminator? It's not going to turn into a. Uh, it's not going to turn into its own Terminator type thing where they can destroy no, the I world. Don't. Yeah, no, I don't think so. They would have to find a very strong power source to do that. We don't. They don't have. There's not enough power to manifest a Terminator style. Oh, I'm sure that they've got hidden nuclear weapons in Russia. Sure, there is a lot of conspiracy about things left and right, and I think that's what this will prompt. It's a lot. You'll see a lot of conspiracy about what this could become, but what it currently is is just a language module that you can interact with, and you can feel fairly comfortable that it's going to provide you uh, contextually correct answers. Um, I will say, like I've asked it simple questions in programming, and it gave me this whole answer, and it gave me a reasoning, and it was wrong. And I said to it, "You're wrong," and it said, "Oh, you're right. I am wrong." Here's why I'm wrong. So if I don't, I mean, take it with a grain of salt. It's still in its beta phase, but in five years from now, it will be complete. And I think it's going to be replacing things like your Google search. Uh, your Google search bar is probably the first thing that will be replaced with AI. And you'll see it popping into your phone is uh, Siri will probably be built into one of these types of things, or one of these types of things will be built into Siri. Siri, Shmishmixa. Let's yes. see what what you, else. You, uh, so that she wouldn't. So that she wouldn't. Uh... Oh yeah, Schmishmuck says back there. Okay, yeah. Sometimes if my if my TV says a word that has an S too loudly, my home. Uh huh. That's the most annoying thing when when I'm interviewing people. Mm-hmm. So I um I'd say that I think that everybody needs to try out this bot and see how it can best, especially if you work from home and you are a person a uh, person that does content writing. Uh, if you think about the AI photo generators, it's just the next step after photo generators. Is it's really best uh, to me? It seems like a tool best built for content writers. Is there issues with copyright when it comes to that? Because there's the photo generator. There's a lot of discussion about copyright with that. Has there yeah, been discussion of that? Absolutely. I think I should research that more before I gave like a full answer. But I think that that's something that you definitely should be mindful of is copyright issues. And who owns the copy that is written? You know, is it you or is it the chat bot? Those are questions that I think the legal system are going to have to deal with as well. And I don't want to be that lawyer. No, absolutely. Well, I don't. I didn't want to be a lawyer, but you know. Yeah, so I think, uh, and that, that goes for code, too. It does produce code snippets for software engineers. Is that code written? If I work for Google as an engineer and I use ChatGPT, uh, which if I use ChatGPT while working at Google, they might fire me because they have their own AI systems. But anyway, regardless, the point is, and then it produces a code snippet. I use that, put it into the Google algorithms. Who owns that? Was it OpenAI, the company that produced ChatGPT, or is it Google that produces it? You know, I think that 
uh, OpenAI has a lot of questions to answer in open court, which I'm sure there will be soon litigation involving something that happens on ChatGPT. And I'm sure Congress is, after it, you know, is done dealing with stupid stuff, it's probably going to start asking questions about this as well. Yeah, hopefully they respond to it uh, in a more effective manner than they did uh, with the blockchain blo uh, explosion. The problem that we're seeing, I think that it will just highlight more of those same similar issues. Technology moves faster than the speed that we govern. And it, this is the fastest that technology has boomed since the, the, the blockchain craze in 2017 is when all the litigation yeah. came down for that. But blockchain had been around since 2009, and they're going to have to do that a lot faster. They're going to have to impact and involve themselves in this a lot faster, just like they, they involve themselves in search with Google and with these big corporations. Like I said, I think $24 billion is what OpenAI is worth now based on their investments. That's a large, big tech company that is going to have to report to somebody. It needs competition as well inside of a capitalistic society. They can't have a monopoly over that chatbot, which they currently do. So yeah, so either Google questions. needs to finish theirs or they're going to release it too early. Mm -hmm. And then everybody's oh. going to say that it stinks. Indeed. Uh, I think I'm excited. I think that I think most people should be excited that there's a tool like this that's out there. And I think that, you know, there will be idiots that will have it right. An entire article, not read it over, not make edits to it, think that it's correct answers and then put it out there and we'll see a lot of misinformation that they said came from chat GPT. Like you said, it has Wikipedia vibes in terms of its accuracy. It's only as good as what other people have put into it. Yeah. And then I'm and then you've got I think what we need in general is we need to start electing younger people into Congress so that they can they we can have the right legislation to protect it and also protect the American people as well from either either industries getting lazy and not keeping human beings there to check on things or or too much or somehow stifling this new technology. Yeah, I um I think the biggest issue that could we could see is that these new AI companies that are being developed uh, go without oversight, go without like where uh, the question that they should propose or should be prompted by our government should be, where does this information come from from chat GPT when it asks these questions and they get answered? That, that needs to be put back to the American people in a way that they can understand it, in a way that yeah. our parents can understand where that information is coming from. Because right now it just comes from a little box that says, in a, in a human text form, it looks like someone's on the other end just typing out an answer to you. And, and I mean, the answers are fine, but it's, but yeah, we just, yeah. Liability behind those answers is another thing. If you ask it, if you ask it pretty crazy questions, they do have some filters on what it can and can't answer for you. Like I'm assuming it, it's like, should I kill myself? It's not going to answer that. Right. Or how do I kill somebody? Or, you know, what it do? Yeah. Where to bury a body or something of those natures. It has. You platforms. hope at least. <laughs> you hope at least. Right. But there are for every filter that they put. I'm sure there's a clever person out there that's asked the bot in a different way to get the answer that it needs to. So finding those uh, issues with it and uh, tackling those immediately is what these companies need to do. Well, thank you for coming on with Sexy Politico and and letting everybody know about Chat GTP, GPT. Is there anything you want to add before we uh, close up shop? No, I think uh, I appreciate you uh, uh, having me on the show, of course. And if anyone ever has any questions for me, they can find me on Twitter at Brandon JP Scott. All right, every uh, links will be in the show notes, and. Uh, Thank you for listening and I will see you all next week. Have a great day. Bye.